Welcome to episode 10 of this Let's Play series. We're playing Dwarf Fortress. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Nothing really too exciting. I mean, there's been a lot of stuff happening, but nothing massively threatening for us just yet, which is probably a good thing. Uh, but it's probably a little bit too early for us to be uh, having the, dwarf, the fortress under threat. <laughs> it'll come, it'll come, it'll come. So anyway, let's just get into it. This is the bedroom layer. I'm just going to show you how to sort of build bedrooms. It's fairly simple. Uh, all you need to do is just make sure that you got to do have a stock of bedrooms. If we just go back up to the uh, up to the top through here, we've got uh, a number of different bedrooms in or beds in here, and um, so there's a number of them in through there. Plus doors. You need that's all you really need to sort of get established with bedrooms. Now, you probably also want to have. And if we go back to our work orders, let's have a quick look at the work orders. We started off by making ten rock doors and ten beds, and we've got them also on a on a bit of a a loop where when there's less than five doors build the build 10 of them next time same with the bed so when we get to less than five they're going to give another work order to keep on building more more beds and doors another one that we really want to be putting in like that's the minimum of, of what we need to make a bedroom so we set this one up a few episodes ago uh, we're going to create another one in here just to have some sort of container uh, dwarves need somewhere for their undies so <laughs> their underpants and undergarments and things or just their socks and mittens or whatever else they might actually have quite often you'll find that bedrooms become quite messy because of the, um, the clothing that they sort of leave on the floor and so what we need to do there is actually just make sure that we've got a container for their room but it's not 100% necessary it's not actually the requirement is a bed and a door for the bedroom and um, and in fact you can even get around that if you want to do it all manually but I want to do it automatically so that's the that's the minimum plus you want to have some sort of container so I'm just going to go and do that as well so I'm just going to go down to the stone there's a few different ways you can do this by the way if we go to the carpenter's workshop you're looking at things for example like so if you've got heaps of heaps of wood um, you might want to make um, chests in through here uh, you can make um, cabinets as well like so you end up with like a a large a large cabinet inside the room or just a chest would be a chest I, I like the look of in in rooms but you could have both if you wanted to but really they're, they're sort of like they're pretty much the same sort of deal in what they actually then go and do if you go to the stone workshop and I tend to make things out of rock because you end up with so much rock you know you don't not, don't know much else, what else to do the chests in here are called coffers so we need to actually have a a thing for here for rock coffers so we're just going to throw that one in or cabinets again as well so let's just go and, and make those add this one in so when there's empty rock coffers are less than five we might as well just do it the same as what we've got with the others so when it's less than five build more so this is actually when they check next time that's going to be it's going to be yes it does need to be added into the mix anyway we don't need to we'll have them we'll put them in after after we've actually sort of finished and let's but let's just go across again uh to the bedroom layer um where are we there's a lot of lots of i'm going to be talking a, a lot in this episode about workshops and managing your workshops getting things to sort of work so that uh, it, uh, things have become automated in a clean way and plus some tips about how to stock how to store all your um all your your rock work and uh, like the actual stone work and stuff because a stone stockpile is going to fill up very, very quickly. Like all of this stone in through here, but there is a way to actually make it so that it comp compacts and you end up with multiple stones in a very small area. So I'll show you that as well. We may do that with a few other things as well. Like we may do it with the with the metal ores as well, just to have like a central area for that as uh, in somewhere. But I don't know where I'm going to be, be, be building that just yet. It may be deeper down, depending on what we find. Uh, maybe on this layer. I'm not sure. Uh, well, not the Slayer, but up in, up in the top of the fortress. <clears throat> anyway, let's just go ahead and go to build. So this is to build the bedrooms. Um, furniture, bed. Now, just make sure you have this one ticked on. So keep building after placement. And just go and place a bed in each of the different little areas. Now, that's all going in. And just wait until you've got all of them done. Now, I don't think I've got any more. If I go to there, yep, I'm out of beds. So I can make six beds across there. Let's just now go to the... We need both beds and doors to do this. So you need both. Doors in through this side. Door. And yeah, we've got heaps of doors. Yeah, I'll just get a few more down here as well. Just get them ready. This will then 
satisfy the need to then go and, and create more doors. That's all the doors in the fortress. And now to actually make the beds, you don't actually have to have the beds in here to do this. You can just go ahead and go to your zones and your bedroom layers and just click on bedroom, but just make sure that you've then got multi selected, not just paint. So I can actually go and say, I want this to be a bedroom, but then I have to remember to put the bed in there as well. If you've got even just a plan, because this, this has now been allocated beds, if you just go to multi, it basically say select a rectangle uh, which contains beds in order to form bedrooms. You need the door as well. Rooms with multiple beds will be made into, into dormitories. So if we had multiple beds in the one area, we could make a dormitory. Now, I, I think I want that at somewhere in the fortress, but I'm not sure exactly where just yet. Uh, I'll have to think about where we put that. Maybe over on this other side. I was going to put noble quarters over here. Anyway, let's just go and uh, drag. Now, as long as there's a bedroom in here, I can just do this any old place. I'll just go and drag there, for example. And it will then make the bedrooms, you know, so that it contains the all of the walls as well around it and overlap as well. So when we come, we'll just click on done. And when I go and click on one, for example, you can see it's actually overlapping the, the walls, which is fantastic. So that's exactly what we want with bedrooms. Um, the reason for the needing for the wall overlapping is because the value of the bedroom takes in all of the tiles plus the walls plus the stuff that's inside it so if we need somebody that needs to have a good quality bedroom the walls can be quite important if we smooth them and then engrave them you can really add a lot of value to your bedrooms very very simply now i won't talk about value of rooms just yet we will do that when a little bit later on like when we do temples and inns and um, and also bedrooms like when, when we get nobles but we're still a long way off from that point yet so rather than covering it now Let's do it when we've actually got something very tangible to sort of show the show how to do it and why you do it. We'll still be heading towards that way though. We're sort of just in like we're preparing the groundwork for good quality stuff to raise the value. Anyway, that's uh, the first lot of bedrooms will be across there. Uh, as we come back up now, there's a few I've opened up. I've channeled this great big area through here. Now I do want to have. We sort of saw in the last one that I had like stone over through here. I've got some jewelry back and through this side, like a jeweler's, and I also have the carpenter's workshop in here. So, in reality, they're going to have to, if they, like, they're going to have to move down to pick up whether it be stone or wood or whatever else it might be. I don't need, I don't need to have everything exactly in the in the same position all the time. I'm thinking of making a stone, a, a wood pile, and then actually having a a metal ore pile. So that would be sort of like the three different piles that would be wanting on that side. And then this side, I'm thinking of actually having mainly just furniture, and uh, because furniture doesn't doesn't you can't store furniture in bins or boxes. So let's go. Let's this whole video. I'll probably just go through and explain the different types of workshops and what you probably want to be looking for. We're going to change a few things with our kitchen workshops as well, or ki kitchen storage is probably more to the point. So uh, in this one here, we don't don't want like gems can be stored into um, into bins. And so we can do that one quite succinctly by just actually having a bin for gem storage. Well, that's probably the most complex of the systems we're going to set up. But let's just do this one here now for stone. And I'll just give you a few little clues as to how to make the best of these. So we're going to go across into the um, into the stockpile. I'm just going to create a stone stockpile in through to say here. So accept. And then we're just going to go to stone. Now, the only sort of stone that we want is just this boring old normal stone that we use for, use for everything else. I'm just going to go back into custom with the stone selected and I'm just going to go to metal ores. I want none of those. Economic, I want none of those and clay, I want none of those. So that's the, they're the different types of stone that I do want. Um, now the, yes, yeah, so it's just other stone and that's all I actually want in there. Now I'm just was thinking actually if I do the metals, I normally split the metals up into different groups, but let's not worry about that. We'll just, uh, we'll just actually put it, put it all into, into a, into stockpile for now. So that's the wood st stockpile. Uh, then we've got the next one across is going to be the wood stockpile. So I'll just go and create another one. Okay. Accept and wood. And wood doesn't have that middle area of custom, so any wood is going to be fine for me. Uh, that's the wood stockpile. And then we'll just make another stone stockpile. So I'll just go and grab another one. And I'll just put all of my metals in here for now, but I will actually split them out a bit later on. And by, I'll show you how to split them out as well when we do this one. So we're just going to accept this one. So metal ores, not these, but the metal ores, which I'm not seeing any on this layer here, actually. If we go up a layer, no. Yes, that, that's metal ore there. 
metal ore over here. So metal ore, uh, what I want to do through here is just have this one set to ba -ba -ba -ba, stone and through the side. And um, and so with the stone, that's just going to be going to custom. In this case, we'd leave the metal ores on. The I might leave it as metal and economic just for now. And, uh, and then we'll just turn the other ones off. So none of those and no clay. All right, so that's now done. And um, so what we now need to do is we need to end up with this being the a uh, like full of this actual stonework. Now, initially it doesn't matter. Actually, by the way, I'll just I'll just do what I need to do in here. We may tweak this again a little bit later on. Let's just go and get another one here, and we'll make this one. We'll accept that, and this will become our furniture stockpile. And furniture doesn't use. Uh, bar, uh, like barrels or bins, so it's every single piece of furniture will end up being in here, unless it's uh, unless it's been filled up with an area for rock. <laughs> so I'll show you how to deal with that as well in just a minute, and also then make the most out of your rock stockpiles. Uh, if we just go across to furniture at the top through here, uh, just have a look at custom. Now I pretty much want everything in here. This will be my catch-all, so I'm not going to turn anything off for furniture. So any type of furniture will be okay in here. So that's not a problem. Uh, so that's now a furniture stockpile. That means that when we go back up to the top, I no longer need anything at all in my top stockpile that I was actually having here in here before. So if we have at the moment we've got custom, I don't need furniture or C demo for example anymore. So I can just go none for that, and that way they'll then just bring them back downstairs. Uh, everything else is actually okay. So I'll just leave that one where that is for now. Eventually we're going to be moving everything down to we could actually make even make the one that's downstairs into the into the standard stockpile for now but let's just keep on going with different bits and pieces so that's that stockpile now the wood stockpile that we have here i'm just going to go and turn that one off so this is our wood stockpile let's just go and remove that stockpile that way all the wood will then be taken downstairs uh what else have we got that's actually happening in through this side um i will keep this one where it is at the moment now the other thing is we no longer need these um these workshops so let's just slate them for removal we don't actually need them anymore we want to start doing more things downstairs so they'll all be removed just make sure you have that one's going to be removed and um eventually we can get just get rid of this this catch-all as well but we'll keep it there for now and uh they've got different bags in through there as well there's just going to be a lot of different bits and pieces i I'm probably will try to keep the um the stuff ready for the ready for the traders down this way somewhere but i'm not sure exactly where yet it won't matter too much where that actually is yeah so at the moment we've got a lot of finished goods in here which is sort of also what things will like that that's means that they can be stolen so to be a little bit careful like it's right near the surface but that'll be fine that'll be fine now we need to also ultimately keep on working away at the top of the fortress trying to sort of dig things through i'm just checking these as i go now the food stockpile um there's a few different things that we can set up in through here. And, oh, sorry, before I do that, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a minute. We'll just keep on with the workshops. So with the workshops, uh, I was going to talk about how we can then sort of have an area for stone to then be collected where we don't just have one piece of stone per area because this is going to fill up very, very quickly. What we can do is we can create a, what's called a dump zone. So there's different... This can get quite confusing. Like, when, what is a refuse pile? What is a dump pile? What's, you know, why do you have them? What do they mean? And um, so on and so forth. Now, the garbage dump is says it says items designated for dumping will be tossed into the open air surfaces, including into this zone. If no open air tiles are, are included, they'll be dumped. They'll dump the items on the floor. Now they can dump multiple items in the same location, which means we can have a lot of stone in one location. And so I'm just going to go and create like a, a just a little three by three or something. You know, like just to, even in around here, for example. So if I just go into the garbage dump. And I can have these all over the place, by the way. So I can have a garbage dump. And if I wanted a bit, usually I'm just cleaning up rock. And I just want to dump the rock out of where people are walking and just keep it out of the way. Now, the best place to keep it is in a stone stockpile. So I can even have other things that end up in there to start with. And then we can go and tweak them afterwards. So I'm just going to go and create a 3x3 three three and just go accept. So garbage dump of 9. Accept that one through there. This is now anything designated for dumping. And this is important. It's not refuse. It's not, it's not dead animals. It's nothing like that. It's just when we designate it for dumping, it will be dumped in there. And you can use this a lot in your fortress to move specific things into specific areas. It's actually a really, really powerful way of doing this. Now, one, but the one 
probably the most basic sense, sense is to just move your stone into one area. So if we're going to just do that one, I'll just uh, just go OK. That well, that one is now accepted. I'm just going to right click. So that zone it does exist right underneath here. So we've actually got now got the garbage dump, and it won't. As I say, it won't just throw refuse and garbage or, or you know like the actual garbage it will only throw the things that we actually designate for dumping and so if I go back up to for example my bedroom layer actually if I go down to my bedroom layer back and through here there's all this rock in here that we don't really want here and there's even there's there's also galena like this is metallic ore so we don't want that in here as well so I might as well just dump all of this stuff and so all I do is I just go to my designations down through here and then there's the designated an item for dumping into a dumping zone. And so this is where it's super powerful. Like if I just go and just grab everything that's actually on this layer so far, that's all designated for dumping. It doesn't affect the stuff that we're going to be trying to push down. In fact, it's um, even even forbidding certain things. Like if I, if I forbid an item, like by using this one here, no one will pick it up. And that can be quite useful if you've got like a lot of... If there's a lot of workers trying to work on something in particular, like trying to grab something, uh, I will often just go and actually block off access to uh, specific items by forbidding them. These are quite powerful designations. But anyway, the dumping one is going to now dump them. When they do get dumped, and it's we've done really enough dwarves, they probably won't have... Has anyone got no jobs? No, everyone's got a job at the moment. So I just want to, like, they probably won't get to pushing these around. This will be a low priority, but they will eventually clean up this whole area, which is, as I say, it's really, really cool. When we get a, like a big influx of, uh, of population, it's very easy to then control the, the look of your fortress. Now, back in the bad old days of the free version of the game, uh, the good old days, you could actually, uh, there was a, a DF hack was a, a program that had a whole lot of little helpers. And I used to just designate things for dumping and then auto dump into a particular area. It was a faster way of doing it. It was just automatic. Whereas in this case, you do have to have your dwarves run through and actually pick up the rocks, which I, which I guess is more what it should be. But I don't know. I do like the, the cleanliness of actually having it done that way. So that's the um, that's the dumping of, of rock. So we've now got the dumping zone in there. Though all those rocks, including the metal, even though that we want the metal over here, will be designated to be placed into this zone. So we'll watch over time when that one is done. Um, everything else is good through there. Now let's talk about the higher level elements. So we've now got the so we've got a stone stockpile through here. If we view the stockpile, this is actually all three of these are the same stockpile. We're going to now change this one so that it always stays full. That way, that way, anyone that has to work in here can just go straight to the edge, pick up the stone that they require, and then work with it. So we're going to go across and go to this little thing here. So set uh, from which workshops and stockpiles, this stockpile gives and takes items. So we just go and grab that one through there. So we're going to go and take from, so this is a choose a stockpile from which the selected stockpile will take items. We're going to tell it to take from this stone stockpile. That's done. Okay, then we can just go back, or we can just do it again. And I want to then give it, so choose a stockpile to which the selected stockpile will give items. So we can do this one, actually you can do this with the workshop as well. Like I can just go to the workshop and say, hey, um, workshop, <laughs> uh, I want you to take from a particular uh, from a particular place. And so, um, so we want it to take from this one through here. So take from the stone stockpile, done. And that way it will only take from what's next to it. So it, it, will, it will be nice and quick and it just streamlines. So you don't have to do this, but it's, um, but it does sort of smooth things out. So it just means that that's the only stockpile it will actually then go and take from. And if we just go and do this one in here. Now, if there is things like, for example, I can see that there's some metal in here and I don't really want that one. So we just go and grab that one, just click on done. So that's now designating those to take from that area. And same with the woodcutter, like we're going to go and add in another stockpile in through here. Just add a, add a woodcutter stockpile, except. And this will be then the, the wood. So uh, wood from here. Uh, select it to take from this this wood stockpile that's going to be here, which has got nothing in it just yet. But that's where it's going to come from. So that's now done. So if we just go back up and then again, just go and select the uh, this one here, go, go and, and uh, take it from. So rather than sort of going outside to pick up wood, if it runs out of wood, we have to have it designated. So we've now created a, ch a chain of, uh, of where they go. So that will take from this stockpile. This stockpile will only take from that stockpile. 
if this stockpile has areas in it that can still be filled, they'll then go outside and pick up wood off the ground to bring it back down. So we sort of can contain a little bit about what's going on with the with what's happening and we can keep an idea of stocks. Now, ultimately we wanna get rid of all this stuff as well. So I dump all that. These things, things in through here, even though it's gonna be dumped in the wrong area, I don't mind. So I can just go across into my dump again. And rather than going through with the marquee select, like where I do this, I can just go and go, go to paint and then I can just go and click on things. So that's gonna go for dumping. Anything like this, that can be gone for dumping. This can be gone from dumping. All of these things, I'll just go back into my box select, go and select all of those. So I want these out of here because this is where I'm gonna be using things for the um, uh, for other things. Like we're going to sort of be, be uh, this will be a stockpile just for the jewelers, for example. So let's get the jeweler now set up. The jeweler is a little bit more complicated. So I want the jeweler to only operate from within very designated stockpiles. Now, a lot of the jewelry can be placed into boxes or bins. And so um, we're just gonna set up like a, a few different stockpiles in here. So let's just go across. I'm gonna create a, a very small, we don't need very much for raw gems because of that extra storage. So we'll make this into a raw gem stockpile. So we just go to gems, go to custom, and uh, well, rough gems actually. So rough gems, not raw. <laughs> so we'll just go back across, just select none in through this side. And that will be just rough gems will then be stored in that stockpile. So that's all we're going to have in there. Okay, let's go and create another one. So this will be another one through here. This will be another gem stockpile. So we'll accept gems, custom. In this case, I'm just going to go none, but I'm going to allow now cut gems to stay here. So I'm just going to go allow any cut gem to be at that location. So that's all we need there as well. That's where they're going to pick up the actual gems from. And then from here, there's a few different things we can put in here. I tend to like, if we've got things that are going to be in bins and boxes, we can leave them in bins and boxes. If it's going to be like furniture, and I do want to, I want to dual encrust furniture. Ultimately, we're going to need to do that for the for the uh, for the fortress. Let's go and set up like a, a stockpile for furniture and another stockpile for finished goods. So we're just going to go and create a, a furniture stockpile in through this side, and I'll make it. That big will be big enough, I think, for what we need to do. We don't want to have too much furniture in here at any one time. It's just going to be for picking up and having very, very good quality furniture in here to, as, a, as a base to then dual encrust it. So we're just going to accept this one. We're going to go across to furniture. Now, the custom for this one, I only want to have specific types of furniture and also specific quality of furniture. So. As we go through, it's a little bit sort of convoluted, but I don't mind what, what type of furniture it is, like whether it be stone, clay, metal, or other materials. So that's actually okay. From the types, I don't want anvils. So I do want arm, armor stands. I'll just turn off the ones that I, that I don't want. Beds I want, bins I don't. Uh, boxes I, I do want, actually. I'll keep boxes. That's different to bins. Boxes are things like... Um, uh, like um, uh, not cabinets, <laughs> like chests and uh, coffers. So that's sort of different again. Buckets we don't want. Cabinets we do want, not that. Coffins we do. Doors are okay as well. Floodgates, no. Grates, no. Hatch covers, even though we've got doors, yes, I'm gonna go hatch covers, no, because we tend to put them away from where people walk. So I want these to be sort of like right in the middle of where things are actually happening. So uh, hatch covers won't really add to the value of a room and I'm looking for value adding at or going into high traffic areas. Uh, mechanisms, no. Millstones, no. Minecarts, no. Other large tools, no. No, no, no. Um, no. Slabs, yes, because this will be uh, where we memorialize the dwarves who die that we can't retrieve their bodies. Uh, statues, yes. Tables, thrones, traction benches, no. Weapons rack, yes. No and yes. So I'll go that way. Uh, so that's actually where we are. That's just for the type. Then we come down to the core quality. Now I don't look this this way. I don't end up with a heap of different furniture up in here. I'm not going to get rid of. I'm going. I'm going to ditch standard, well crafted, finely crafted, and uh, artifact. Artifact will not be dual encrusted anyway. Usually, so it's sort of one of those things where we just leave it alone. It's its own super value thing anyway. So we're just going to go with superior quality, exceptional, and masterwork. And we haven't got any masterwork items yet. I don't think in the fortress. I'll try to find a way to show the values. Um, but if you just remember, well-crafted, finely crafted, superior. Now you can look at the, at the like these are the little symbols next to elements. Let's just go into here. I'll just do the same thing in this side. 
and get rid of artifact. And so if we just go and leave that as what we then do for the for here, let's have a quick look at just uh, at what's happening with the finished good bins, and that may sort of give us a bit of a clue as to what we've got. Although there probably isn't much to be honest. Um, what else have we got in through here? This is um, oops. Yeah, so this is not this doesn't have any. This is just stock standard stuff. This one here is all stock standard stuff. No, no extra quality. That's all. This is just gems actually. So this ultimately will be gone from here. We need to make sure now that we've got everything set up for gems. We can just go across into custom gems. So we better just go back and sort of reset this one here. And uh, so rough gems, we we don't want that to. We want no rough gems and no cut gems because they're all now going to be positioned down below. So we don't need that there. I'll just what this bin is that one may be. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So we've got a few different types of of quality. If we let's just say, look at this puzzle box in through here. If we look at it, it just says this is a conglomerate puzzle box. There's nothing special about it. It's a value of about ten. If we then have a look at the um, at the the this one here, a granite amulet. If we have a look and see what it says, this is a well crafted granite uh, granite amulet. And so this is a little bit better, which is designated by the little minus sign. And then we just go back across, do it again. Uh, the next one up will be this little plus. So this is a finely crafted. So we've gone from well crafted to finely crafted. And so the value is now 18 on this one. Actually, I didn't look at what the value was on the previous one, if we have a bit of a look. So this amulet is 14. So you can see the value is just going up slightly because of the actual how well crafted it actually is. Uh, we'll just have another look and see if we've got anything better than that. No, we don't actually have... So nothing there is beyond those first two little levels. I don't know if we've got anything in here that is... Um, yeah, this Babery Wood bed. This is a superior quality Babery Wood bed. So with the asterisk, it's superior quality. And so if we, again, if we just have a look at, this, at the stockpile and have a look at the, uh, the custom, for example, at the furniture. Um, we've now turned this one off, but you can see... Standard has got nothing. Well crafted, finely crafted, superior, and so it's really a, superior. Will go from asterisk and above. So then we've got uh, exceptional quality is like three little three little lines in a row on either side. So it just it, that just indicates the quality of what's actually being done. Anyway, we'll get to um, to look at the way this one actually does work. So we haven't done much in this episode other than just talk about how to set things up. I'm just going to go back into my zone again actually i'll still keep on going because there's a few other stockpiles we do want to establish um, now this one here um, i only want it to take actually i'm just going to put another stockpile in on the side here as well and this will be for finished goods so any finished goods that are of high enough quality we'll sort of deal with them as well so just go to finished goods uh, where are we back in through there and um and generally I could probably put nearly everything of finished goods into here. I'll just go to custom. Oh, I won't put armor, backpacks. Actually, no, there's a lot of stuff here. It's only only, only really the, the trinkets that we're looking at. Chains we don't want to do. Uh, codices, no. Cr crowns, yes. Crutches, no. Earrings, yes. Figurines, flasks, no. Uh, footwear, no. Goblets, yes. Handwear, no. Headwear, no. Large gems, um... No, because we're not going to not going to jewel and crust them as well. Legwear, musical instruments, yes. Quivers, no. Rings, yes. Scepters, yes. Splints, no. Tools, no. Totems, yes. And toys, yes. So that will be the group that we actually then go for with the uh, with the type of of finished goods that we're going to accept. But um, and it doesn't matter again what type of thing it actually is. Now we've got gems in through this side. Um, a, like if, if a finished good is made out of gems, you can still gem encrust it, I guess. So I'll leave it there. Let's just go to core quality again and just get rid of those lower area ones. And same with this one here, in through here as well. Just sort of leave it like this. And that way, uh, we're now going to sort of have nice quality things come up to here. And then we take it, take it further from that point. Now, um, we need to feed from the other stockpiles into these into these high quality stockpiles. So I'm just going to go right click. And so this one at the moment, it's it's actually feeding from the other, like if we go and take from, it's going to go back to where we've got the first one established. So I'm just going to go and click on that one. It's going to take from stockpile number two. And same with the, at the moment, the furniture is ultimately going to go from down below. So we're not going to be using the furniture ultimately into, except for down in here. So this furniture stockpile will be where we take this from so we just go across clicking on that one through there 
take from this stockpile here. Again, nothing in there just yet, but that will then come. And now what we can do is we can now designate where this will then operate from. And so we want this to only take from these four stockpiles. It's the only place we want it to actually work from. So we're gonna to say to this, uh, to this workshop, your only place to work from is those, those, uh, those particular bins. So we're just gonna go and take from there, uh, from there, from here, and from here. And so that's going to be, and if I had a stockpile for the finished goods, I could then place it somewhere else. But let's just leave it like that for now. That way we can sort of uh, do it. Um, finished stock, I wonder if I don't have another stockpile for the finished goods. I don't know where to really put it. I think I'll just leave it there, but I could actually have one that goes then from this one. Once it's actually done something, sends it off somewhere else. But then I've got to still then figure out some of these are going to be cut gems. So it sort of gets a bit complicated. Let's just do that. It's already complicated enough, but this thing streamlines what happens with all of these different areas once we get established. Now, the other thing we're going to have a quick look at is the kitchen layer. Um, actually, not the bedroom layer, the kitchen layer. And where is it? It must be further up. So the kitchens, you can see everything is just bunched into here all, all on its own. Um, now, at the moment, it's not really a massive problem, but there could be at some point. And what I want to do is I want to keep the seeds away from, like separate from the rest of the rest of the uh, of the uh, food. So I'm going to have like a, a, a stockpile for uh, for seeds. Let's just go back into this stockpile here, and we'll just repaint it and make it much much smaller. So most of the basic food, like the catch-all for food, I think I'll still just keep that at the back. So let's just go and uh, and keep it like a, a basic stockpile of of um, of different types of things at the back through there. So I might just make that one. This will be for like if we sort of butcher animals or anything like that, that can just go into the into the far stockpile. So that will be almost like a catch-all, I guess. Then we'll go and create, we'll just accept that. So it's gonna be much, much smaller than the uh, than what it was. Um, I wanna have a seed stockpile. So I'll just go and create like a, a few little stockpiles in through here. So I'll just go across and just do a, um, a new one. And I don't need very much for seeds, like, you know, that will be heaps. So let's just go and do that. Uh, actually, I'll just do it as a three by three or maybe a four by three. So we'll just go that side, except this will be another food stockpile. And we'll come back and just sort of tweak all of these things. So food has now been selected. Now, what I want to have in here is I want to go none, but I want to then have it so that it's only going to be the, um, and it means we have to go the opposite of everything. I'm just going to have my basic seeds. So I'm not, I'm not even going to go to all. I'm just going to go to the five different types that we grow underground, which is going to be the, um, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? The, uh, I always forget where it is. I think cave wheat is the first one that we end up. There's a lot in here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, cave wheat seeds, yes. I always forget one of them. Then I think we go all the way through to, um, to P, I think, is the next one. We've got a few in P. I always, I always miss the, miss one or two of them. Uh, da, 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 we've got, God, there's so much, so much pigtail, and also um, plump helmets. And there's one other one as well that we that I have missed in through there, and then we go to rock nuts. There's one other one as well. Maybe it's under. I can't think of what it actually is. Sweet sweet pots. There's the five. Okay, that's the five different sorts of seeds that we're going to be going to be sort of uh, planting. Uh, and what we do with that one there, so I'm just gonna, that's all I need to do, I just right click. The difference here though, is that we don't want barrels, we just want the bags. What they do is they put the seeds into bags and then the bags into barrels, and we don't wanna have the seeds in barrels. And so if I just go across, and I don't think we've got, we've got about 20 seeds in the fortress, so there will be a floating around, probably in, in one of the barrels over here somewhere. Um, we'll have a bit of a look at that anyway. So we're just gonna go across into here and by default, it's a food area. So it actually uses barrels. So I'm just gonna go and, and go, I don't want any barrels, thank you. So I'll just come back out. So no barrels, no bins. It's just gonna be basically the bags for the seeds will then end up being in this location. This allows them to, the individual farmers to go and pick up a bag and, and go and use it. It's sort of, it's, you don't need anything more than that at this point in time. Uh, that will then work. 
The next thing we want to do is to have another stockpile for our finished goods. So like if we've got prepared meals. So let's just go across. In fact, if we have a look and see what they've done with the with this in here, if we just go back into this is an empty barrel. This one here is full of uh, biscuits. So this is um, we've got um, yeah, this is this is finished goods, and I do want to have my own finished goods stockpile. Uh, that one's empty as well. The bins are empty in through there as well. These are full. These have got um, so rock nut bags. So these have got different bags, and the dimple cup spawn bags. So this is seeds. So that ultimately, these these bags are in here. Will end up over here. But what we need to do is we need to tell this stockpile, you take from. So choose a stockpile from which this will take items. This is our catch-all, so take it from there. So it's still useful to have these big catch-all areas and uh, and then let them then sort out what's going to happen through this side. Similarly, down in through this side, we can just go back across. Now, I can, of course, go in and, and reverse what I had done with the seeds that we actually want in through this side. Let's just go and create another stockpile. There's a lot you can do with this. Uh, make this one into, say, a... Um, a drink stop part at this stage and if we have to reshuffle we can just re repaint them if we needed to so in this case we just go across accept food um, custom and so in this case I'm just gonna go none now drinks from plants and drinks from animals I think I'll make it just drinks from plants so we'll just go this way and just go and create anything at all from these now there's a few other little things that we can tweak with this so there's a lot to talk about that you can sort of do with this one here so drinks from plants okay take it from this stockpile so we're just going to go any drinks from plants bring it in from this stockpile done it means that anything from animals would just stay back in there which is fine uh, then we're going to go to uh, like the finished uh, areas so if we just go across again to creating a new stockpile again down through here this will be for our biscuits except and um, so I can actually name what the stockpile actually is as well like I can actually sort of say this is seed uh, seed uh, stockpile or um, you know I, might, I should probably do that actually anyway let's just go across to food again custom and so this one is going to be for prepared meals only so I'm just going to go none but then accept prepared meals so that will be all we actually have and I'll just go all so oh hang on that's um, if we do that one on, yeah, that should still not be, that shouldn't really matter. That should be okay. So if we just go with prepared meals as what we actually end up doing, we're just going to go okay. Um, just right click. And um, again, just going to take from that other stockpile. So just done in through there. And um, I'll just call this one um, prepared. meals I could end up even having like a different one for high quality as well I can have just low quality and then high quality so we can actually sort of specify different things in through there um, in fact it should have had that in the settings in those settings it should have actually had the quality I'm a bit uh, surprised that it's not there that's okay that's okay because there are different types of meals um, make this into a drink stockpile Now, at the moment, we probably have it set up so that they can use, we saw up through here, this is a bit of a, a warning to me, that we've got, uh, actually, where was it? That's just raw food up that side. And, and raw food is fine. I can actually use the raw food down in, in this area as well and create like a stockpile of just the raw food that they tend to be using. So we could end up with the plump helmets in, uh, stored in this area, uh, which is probably another, another good idea. So let's just go and do that as well. Accept and then food and uh, custom and so this will be uh, and I'm just going to keep just vegetable types th type things in through here I'm just going to go to none to start with and we can then just go and, and have things for example like the um, uh, fruit and leaves just go to all I'm guessing plump helmets will be in here I'm not sure exactly where they will be actually no they're not this is for stuff from outside in that case we won't worry too much about that one. We'll just go to the plants. Oh, there it is, plants. Yeah, I'll just go with plants. And, and th in this case, I will just use the, um, I'll, I'll set, it, set it up to all and that'll be okay. This will be this will be sort of what they then use as their staple for what they're actually going to be doing. Um, 
And again, we're just going to go back and just take it from that, that catch-all at the back. So done. And so I hope I'm making sense with this. So we're just getting the bits and pieces closer to where we're working. And we're just going to have it so that we can see what's going on. Like this will be seeds. Um, okay, so... Uh, and uh, Yeah, plants, I guess. <laughs> we'll just do it so we know, uh, know what's going on here. And uh, now with the actual cooking of these things, like we did actually see in one of these areas that they actually had biscuits. Now they had dwarven wine biscuits. Uh, they had plump helmet biscuits, that's okay. Uh, but they had dwarven wine biscuits. So they're actually using the wine to create their biscuits. And we don't want that. We're already low on drink anyway. So we need to go and tell them to stop doing that. So you do that down through here in your, work, in your labor menu. So you go to labor. You'll then sort of see you've got all sorts of different things. You've got your work details, your standing orders. Like this, these are really quite powerful, by the way. Like, the, and um, I won't go into it here, but you can with refuse and dumping. At the moment, workers will ignore outdoor refuse. So if we actually have dead things outside and we're worried about it, undead coming, we may want to bring that inside, which means that if something, if an animal dies outside, we, we may want to give ourselves an, an instruction to go and grab it. And we just turn that one on that way. And, but we can still ignore the vermin, which the, the undead don't touch. But other other things that die outside, that can be worth doing, actually, in, a, in, a, in an area where you've got towers nearby. And we do definitely have a tower nearby. We've got a big, powerful tower nearby. Uh, anyway, that's that's where we have it in through there. Have a look through these and figure out what you want to do with them. Uh, but we want to go to kitchen. Now, it'll only show us what we actually have um, for... Um, uh, uh, actually, the, the, uh, here, sorry, we've got the things in through here. The vegetables, fruit, and leaves. At this point, it only shows you what you're actually using, what you've actually got in your stocks. And so cave wheat, we can brew that or cook it. Pigtails, we don't want to be brewing pigtails. Pigtails we want to be using ultimately for cloth. And so we just want to store pigtails up for our cloth uh, when we do clothing. So that's going to be down the track. So definitely, definitely don't want to have that one turned on. We've only got two pigtails that we've actually harvested at the moment. We don't want to be wasting those. So they go, they, they are not brewed. Cave wheat's fine. That's not a problem. Plump helmets, drink and food is fine. This will then create the, the plump helmet spawn for us and we can then sort of make use of it. Uh, if we go across to seeds, now none of these we want to use for cooking. I can turn them on if I wanted to, but we don't want to be doing that one. So we've got like a, a fair bit of plump helmet spawn, a fair bit of dimple cup spawn and rock, nut, rock nuts as well, but we don't do anything with those. Drinks, Dwarven wine, dwarven ale, no, don't drink, don't use them for cooking at this point in time, unless we had heaps and heaps of it, but we don't. We've only got a small number. Uh, and then meat, fish, and others, donkey's milk, 200, 200 humped camel milk, and yak's milk, yeah, cook, cook away, I don't care. I'm happy with that. So they can use that for cooking. This is quite important, um, just to check this every so often. Now, eventually, we're going to be wanting to butcher animals, and we're going to be wanting to have their fat uh, also processed. We need that for making soap. So when you start butchering animals, after you've butchered your first animal, you'll then actually find that you've got like tallow and things like this. And we need that for other things other than cooking. So turn off the tallow uh, when you've got that as well. So that's just something that is important for when you do start to butcher animals. I always forget to do it, but it's important to do it. Otherwise you're gonna suddenly find when you wanna to start to make your soap, you've got nothing to use as a raw material. So, because it can be used also in cooking. So anyway, that's where we are there. Uh, but we don't, well, that one won't come up, unfortunately, until we actually do have tallow in our stockpiles. Right, I think we're done. Wow, that was a long one. It was a long one for, uh, and we didn't actually do much at all. They just went through stockpiles, really. So that will do for now. Uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, I'll probably tweak these again over time. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next episode. A bit of a boring one, this one. This is just purely stockpiles. <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.